Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In this video we will study about British type of climate which is also called as cool temperate western margin climate. This type of climate is typical to the northwestern regions of Europe as a result it is called as northwest European maritime climate. Under the Köppen scheme of classification this particular climate is represented by alphabets C, F and B where C stands for temperate type of climate and F for wet type of climate where there is no distinct dry season and B stands for cool summer. In the previous video I have explained about China type of climate represented by CFA. The major difference between these two climates is the summer months where summers are warmer in the China type and they are much cooler in the British type of climatic regions. Coming to the distribution, this type of climate occurs on the western coast of the continents within latitudes 40, uh, 40 degrees and 60, 60 degrees in both the hemispheres. We can see this particular region which comes under 40 to 60 degrees north and south of the equator has this particular climate especially on the western side of the continents and we can see it occurs on the southern parts of Australia because of the shape of the Australia where this particular region is curved towards the south pole. These regions are under the influence of westerlies all around the year and this is a Im very important feature because this particular characteristic is the reason behind the year long rainfall in the region. We know that during summers usually convectional rainfalls occur whereas in winters most of the rainfall occurs due to frontal or temperate cyclones in the temperate regions. So this particular climate as it is under the influence of westerlies all the year round it receives good amount of rainfall from the frontal or temperate cyclones. And the temperate cyclones bring maximum amount of rainfall as a result it has winter maximum. That is the rainfall is maximum in the winter season. We know that frontal cyclones are very intense in the winter months whereas in summers they are uh, very weak and hence in winter months they bring good amount of rainfall compared to the summer months. And light snowfall occurs in in this region in winters, we can see this particular region is very close to the Arctic and Antarctic circles. So as a result, they might have extremes of climatic conditions during winters. And ports are never frozen. This is true in, in case of northwestern European climate or the British type of climate where we have North Atlantic drift, drift which is a warm current. So this particular warm current keeps the four, uh, ports free of snow or ice. And the frost do, frost do occur especially in winters and this is not as severe as in the Tundra region or Taiga region. Frost is nothing but freezing of ground or soil. The seasons are very distinct. This is one important characteristic feature of the temperate climatic regions where the seasons are very distinct. And this particular region is favorable for maximum human output because of the moderate climatic conditions. And in the tropical regions we know that because of high temperatures usually it is not ideal for human adaptation whereas in the temperate region especially in the British type of climate where rainfall is well distributed all around the year along with that the temperature is very mild it is best suited for human productivity. And this particular region as we have seen it is a region of high frontal cyclonic activity which brings good amount of rainfall especially in the winter months and the oceanic influence keeps the climatic conditions moderate. So summers are very moderate that is the temperatures are not too low or neither too hot or too high whereas in the winters it is comparatively milder, milder compared to the other regions for example in the Siberian region it is totally freezing because it is in the interiors of the continents so here the continentality plays a very important role but these regions which are under the influence of westerlies that is northwestern Europe and parts of southern Chile, Tasmanian region etc. They are under the influence of westerlies and also this particular region of Europe is under the influence of north Atlantic drift which is a warm current. As a result the temperatures are comparatively low, uh, very comparatively warmer compared to the interior regions of Siberia and other re uh, likewise regions especially Canada and Siberian region. And rainfall is throughout the year with winter maxima and mean annual temperatures varies between 5 degrees and 15 degrees Celsius. So we can see it is very moderate type of climatic condition. 
and winters are abnormally mild compared to the other regions which which are present on the same latitudes and during polar vortex event we know that polar vortex is an extreme cold outbreak during those uh, conditions we have very extreme cold events and adequate rainfall occurs throughout the year and this is important especially in terms of agricultural activities western margins receive heaviest rainfall this is because of the westerly winds prevailing westerlies which flow from south west to north east so as they carry good amount of moisture from the oceans most of the rainfall occurs on the western part of the continents so canterbury plains receive comparatively less rainfall during uh, from this particular westerlies because of the rain shed of effect of the southern alps we know that canterbury plains occur in the new zealand region especially in the southern island of new zealand we have a mountain range called as southern alps so this particular mountain range leads to orographic rainfall on the western side which is called as windward side whereas on the leeward side here we have katabatic dry wind which flows down the slope of mountainic mountain ranges and this particular wind is dry and doesn't have good amount of moisture as a result the rainfall in this particular plain which is called as canterbury plain is comparatively lower compared to the regions on the western side of the mountain so there are four distinct seasons and this is a typical feature of temperate climatic regions here the four seasons are spring summer autumn and winter so autumn is a season between summer and winter and spring is a season between winter and summer we can see summer is a very summer is very or mildly dry season whereas autumn has maximum amount of rainfall autumn is nothing but pre winter season and winter has comparatively less amount of rainfall compared to the autumn season so inter, instead of saying winter maxima we can distinctly say it as autumn autumn maxima rainfall in british type of climate and during the winter seasons most of the trees shed their leaves as a result winter season uh, creates a deciduous type types of type of forest in this particular region whereas spring is the most productive region because of its moderate climatic conditions so winter is cloudy foggy and rains occur due to uh, tropi- uh, temperate depressions and spring is the driest and the most refreshing season it is free of especially snow so this is very good for vegetation of the region it is followed by long sunny summer where winter is moderate i mean the rainfall is moderate and autumn autumn is associated with gusty winds and autumn is a kind of high rainfall season and this type of four distinct season seasons are absent in the tropical regions we know that in the rain forest there is only one season that is rainy season whereas in the savanna type of climate which is also called as tropical wet and dry type of climate we have dry summer season and wet winter season there is no rainy season there are only two seasons in savanna type of climate whereas in the tropical monsoon type of climate we have three seasons one is winter which is dry and summer which is also dry we have rainy distinct rainy season where rainfall occurs so in the tropical regions there are distinct three seasons and the seasons are not well demarcated whereas in the temperate regions we have distinct four seasons and they are well demarcated coming to the natural vegetation most of the forests here are deciduous forests this is because of the cold weather conditions in the winter during cold season trees uh, shed their leaves to save them themselves from the snow as well as to save themselves from cold winds called as blizzards so when there is lot of uh, leaves then snow would stick on the tree and this would increase the weight on the branches so branches would break also when there is gusty winds the tree would be subjected to great amount of friction by the winds and there is chances that trees might be uprooted as a result they shed their leaves in the winter to protect themselves from the gusty winds as well as snow so this is different from the tropical regions where deciduous forests occur and the trees shed their leaves in the summer to save themselves from loss of excess moisture in the form of evapotranspiration and autumn is a fall season that is the uh, leaves starts uh, the trees start shedding their leaves and the important deciduous trees are oak elm birch poplar etc we know that oaks are typical to mediterranean type of climate some oaks are present in this particular uh, region as well whereas oaks are evergreen in the mediterranean mediterranean region whereas they are not evergreen in the british type of climatic region and we have willows which are an example for 
very lightweight hardwood trees and lightweight cricket bats are uh, manufactured using willows willows are also found in the parts of kashmir region so certain type of british type of uh, t- climatic region which is similar to the british type of climate occurs in india especially in the region of kashmir and higher up, up the mountains where the soil formation is not, doesn't suit deciduous forests in such a case we have conifers conifers can adapt to extremes of cold conditions coming to british type of climate lumbering is a very important industry and it is quite profitable in this particular region this is because of trees which occur in pure stands and there is good amount of space between the trees so that transportation of logs is easy and the, the undergrowth is not dense like in the evergreen forest we know that in the equatorial rain forest the undergrowth undergrowth is very dense and trees do, don't occur in pure stands so we can see all these trees here occur in pure stands that is same variety of tree is found over a very large area as a result lumbering in this kind of area where the where trees occur in pure stands is very profitable whereas lumbering in this particular type of climatic region where we have different kind of plant species and also dense undergrowth is not so profitable because of lack of i mean lot of constraints in the form of transportation and also it is not of great economical importance because of various varieties which are available at the same place and this doesn't suit commercial or quite profitable exploitation of forest resources we can see this type of uh, regions like the taiga region has pure stands of trees and it is very good for lumbering industry following that we have british type of climate where we have relatively same or uh, pure stands of trees especially the deciduous forests and this particular trees are very well spaced providing good transportation facilities or aiding good transportation facilities along with that we have other uh, important features like a lack of undergrowth which all aid lumbering industry in this particular region so most of the trees in the british type are the deciduous trees and in the tasmanian region we have temperate eucalyptus so most of the vegetation in australia is mainly consists of eucalyptus trees so eucalyptus are the characteristic features of australian climate especially the eastern regions of australia and higher up the mountains where deciduous trees are replaced by conifers so we know that deciduous trees are usually hardwood trees and conifers are softwood trees so these particular trees are felled and are used for making cardboards match boxes etc which are which mainly depend on softwood for their manufacturing process coming to industrialization certain regions in this particular type of climatic region are very well industrialized we know that british i mean britain or uk along with that we have parts of australia and parts of british columbia all these regions are highly industrialized ones and especially the british northwestern european region is highly industrialized for example we have uk france germany etc all these countries are leading manufacturing hubs as well as various uh, hubs for various economic activities so most of the industry is concentrated with respect to machinery like automobiles etc and we have important chemical and textile industries as well for example in britain we have uh, wool producing I mean textile industries which are which depend on both cotton as well as wool fishing is one important occupation of both i um, mean countries like britain norway and british columbia so british columbia is a part of canada so these particular regions are also good for fishing because uh, because of warm north atlantic drift and also mixing of cold and warm currents in the region along with that we have automobile industry in the rural region that is which is in germany and we have yorkshire manchester and liverpool which are all parts of uk so manchester was famous for cotton textile industries and liverpool is famous for mostly wool industry i mean industries based on wool and yorkshire is also an example for a uh, highly industrialized region previously most of the industry was textile industry which is mo- mostly dependent on wool as raw material so automobile industry is famous in the rural region so lot of uh, important car manufacturers are produce their or have their headquarters in this particular region of germany so dairy products thrive in denmark netherlands and new zealand so all these countries used very high uh, very well developed scientific technologies in dairying industry as a result they are very rich dairying countries tasmania is an important for important for merino wool production we'll see that and wool from this particular region is expo- exported to england japan and china 
this is mainly because of I mean that is the wool which is produced in Tasmanian and New Zealandic regions are exported to England, Japan and China. This is mainly because of lack of uh, labor force which is highly required for textile industry. So Australia and New Zealand are very sparsely populated regions so they don't have good labor force and hence developing a textile industry would cost a lot of money. As a result they simply produce wool and export it to countries like England, Japan and China where the labor po force is good and they can economically transform the wool into textiles textiles for the sale of uh, for sale in the region of Europe and various other parts of the world. So we can see most of the wool is produced in this region Eastern Australia and Tasmanian region along with that we have wool which comes from New Zealand as well. So all the wool is transported to Japan, China and parts of England. So England converts wool and other products into textiles and sells it to the European markets and most of the China and Japanese uh, textiles are sold into Southeast Asian and Indian markets. Coming to agriculture, this particular region is not very good for agricultural activities especially because of its high industrial density. Along with that there are various constraints like a uh, high population density because of favorable uh, climatic conditions. So all these conditions doesn't support intensive agricultural activities like in the China type. So here most of the crops are grown for consumption purpose only so they are not exported. So Northwestern Europe is a net importer of food crops. So marketing, market gardening is one important occupation which is, which is based on truck farming. Here it is nothing but growing of perishable items like eggs, fruits, vegetables etc on the countryside and bringing them to the local market through trucks. So this particular type of economic activity is very important in both USA as well as European regions where they have very well established transportation facilities. Along with that there is huge demand for perishable items like fruits, vegetables etc. Usually in India we use refrigeration to store this kind of items because of bad infrastructure transportation facilities. But this kind of process increases costs in the, t in, in the form of refrigeration. So to avoid this kind of refrigeration costs usually these countries adopt truck farming where there is no storage of produce they simply take it to the market from the farmland directly saving the costs of refrigeration. In Australia high speed boats ply across the Bass Strait. So Bass Strait is a strait between Australia and Tasmanian island. So remember this particular name Bass Strait. So here the fruits and vegetables are transported from Tasmania to the Australian mainland and hence As uh, Tasmania is called as Garden State. And mixed farming is the most important kind of agricultural activity. We know that mixed farming is a type of farming where both farm as well as certain livestock are kept in the same place where each uses each other's waste or uh, produce to, growth, uh, to grow. For example here we can see a rice plantation where we have ducks as a kind of mixed farming activity. So rice is a semi aquatic crop that is it requires good amount of water and ducks usually grow or uh, fish or survive in water regions or lakes. As a result the ducks feed in this particular lake kind of a paddy uh, plantation so they put a lot of waste into, into that uh, field and this waste is used by plants and plants get I mean the birds get fishes which are present in this particular uh, paddy lake. So by using waste the paddy is benefiting and by using the fish the birds are benefiting and this is beneficial for both the types of vegetation. So this is particular type of farming is called as mixed farming and this mixed farming is very well developed in the British type of climate especially in the regions of Denmark, Netherlands and parts of New Zealand, Tasmania etc. So these re regions are very well established with mixed farming facilities. And usually in India we follow mixed farming as well but in India we don't have scientific technologies which can aid for a productive mixed farming facilities whereas Australia, New Zealand and certain parts of Europe have very well established scientific mixed farming conditions. So arable farming is practiced that is food production is uh, takes, uh, takes place in certain regions and when there is the regions are less favorable then pastoral farming is adopted where meadows are grown that is grasses are grown for cattle rearing purpose. So wheat is extensively gr grown but it is only sufficient for self consumption and nothing is exported. And most of the eat, uh, wheat which is required in excess is imported from the prairies region that is the parts of uh, USA. 
नेक्स्ट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सीरियल क्रॉप इज बारले एंड द फाइनेस्ट बारले गोस इन टू बियर मेकिंग सो बियर इज मेड फ्रॉम बारले एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एनिमल्स केप्ट इन द मिक्सड फार्म आर कैटल वी नो दैट कैटल हियर इज केप्ट फॉर बोथ फॉर मिल्क एज वेल एज बीफ सो द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंट्रीज विच फॉलो दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ मिक्सड फार्मिंग आर ब्रिटेन डेनमार्क नेदरलैंड सो हियर मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेस आर साइंटिफिक सो दे आर लेस लेबर इंटेंसिव एंड वेरी प्रॉफिटेबल सो डेयरिंग इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी ऑफ एस्पेशली डेनमार्क एंड न्यूजीलैंड एंड ऑल्सो नेदरलैंड सो ये दीज पर्टिकुलर रीजन्स आर नेट एक्सपोर्टर्स ऑफ डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक मिल्क चीज बटर एक्सेट्रा सो नेदरलैंड लीड्स इन दी एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ चीज वेर एज डेनमार्क एंड न्यूजीलैंड एक्सपोर्ट बटर मिल्क इज कन्वर्टेड टू क्रीम मिल्क इज अ पेरिशेबल प्रोडक्ट सो यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू स्लाइटली नॉन पेरिशेबल और विच कैन सस्टेन फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन सो चीज क्रीम इज अ बेटर प्रोडक्ट वेर वी ऑप्टेन मिल्क वेर मिल्क इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू क्रीम एंड क्रीम कैन स्टे फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम एंड एंस इट इज एक्सपोर्टेड इट कैन बी एक्सपोर्टेड टू दी फार अवे लैंड लाइक वी कैन एक्सपोर्ट इट फ्रॉम न्यूजीलैंड टूवर्ड्स यूरोप सो दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडेंस्ड और एवेपरेटेड मिल्क इज लेस पेरिशेबल एंड इट कैन बी एक्सपोर्टेड फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट्स गोज इन टू बेबी फीडिंग कॉन्फेक्शनरी आइसक्रीम मेकिंग एंड चॉकलेट इंडस्ट्री एंड कमिंग टू दी वेराइटीज वी नो दैट द टेम्परेट रीजन्स प्रोवाइड फाइनेस्ट वेराइटीज ऑफ काउस एंड कैटल दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फेवरेबल कंडीशन हियर देर इज देर इज नो मैनेज ऑफ ट्रॉपिकल डिजीजेस सो इन द ट्रॉपिकल रीजन्स यूजली द कैटल आर मार्ड विथ डिजीजेस एस्पेशली ट्रॉपिकल डिजीजेस विच आर वेरी रैम्प एंड वेर एज इन द टेम्परेट रीजन्स द डिजीजेस आर क्वाइट लो एंड ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट ब्रीड्स a uh, survive in the temperate regions whereas the finest breeds doesn't survive in the tropical regions and most of them are cloned or hybridized but still the those particular species doesn't survive in the tropical regions and everything is mechanized we can see in denmark this is how the cows cows are kept for milk and everything is automated milk uh, milking of cows and maintaining everything is automated so beef produce production is one more important economic activity of british type of climate so dairying is the first and then we have beef beef where cattle is kept for both milk as well as beef argentina australia are highly dependent on meat production along with the production of wool and various other dairy products and the beef here is frozen and chilled and exported to europe so before refrigeration refrigeration was invented Australia was nothing but another dry land but after the invention of refrigeration Australia got very huge advantage in the terms of exports because of the refrigeration facilities and pigs and poultry act as scavengers so dairying products after the manufacturing of dairy dairying products there are there are many by products as well as waste products so all these products are fed to the pigs and poultry uh, poultry animals and this is particularly useful because nothing is wasted everything is used in one or the other way and the pig flesh which is called as bacon is exported from denmark to the various parts of the world and the pig i mean this bacon survives on skimmed milk which is a by product of butter making process sheep rearing is the most impo another imp very important economic activity of the british type of climate so britain is the home for few of the finest varieties of sheep breeds but still it doesn't have a thriving sheep industry uh, or uh, sheep rearing industry this is because of lack of land for sheep rearing we know that most of the britain is industrialized so most of the pastoral regions are converted to industry industries as a result here the sheep rearing industry is not significant and the finest varieties of sheep are imported to are exported to australia and australia is the leading uh, wool producing country this is the chief occupy uh, chief occupation of both new zealand as well as australia you know that in new zealand we have canterbury plains which is a very good pasture land because of a steppy variety of climate so here it is very favorable for both dairying as well as sheep rearing so it exports about 2/3 of the world's mutton exports where it only produces about 4 uh, 4% of the world's sheep and also it exports lar large amount of wool and tasmania which is a part of australia is also a very important wool produ producing region especially the mer merino sheep uh, are fed or bred in this particular region 
and then we have southern chile which is also known for sheep rearing industry so if you compare here we have merino sheep which mainly occur in the australian or other temperate regions and this is an a variety of indian goat so we can compare the kind of wool which is obtained from the best varieties of the world especially the merino sheep and the indian sheep so indian sheep has very small fleece fleece is nothing but the wool uh, threads so this particular fleece is not very long as a result the fleece at the skin is very harsh so indian wool is of less quantity quality because of its its harshness whereas the merino sheep's wool is very long as a result it is very soft at the ends whereas on the other end it is comparatively harsher but this particular soft fleece can be utilized for making very fine clothes or very fine sweaters and various other products so if you compare this with the pashmina goats which are present in the kashmir and himachal region so these particular goats have very long wool and this particular wool is very soft so it is used for making famous pashmina shawls so we can compare pashmina goats which are of equal quality when it comes to comparison with merino sheep so again we can see that kashmir has closely a british type of climate where the temperatures are completely uh, comparatively moderate so other agricultural products include includes potatoes we know that this particular region is not a very good agricultural region as a result it is net important importer of agricultural products and carbohydrates are very important food items and carbohydrates occur in the form of starch in potatoes so potatoes can be a huge supplement for carbs in this particular region where there is less availability of wheat and other agricultural produce so beet sugar is another important crop especially this is uh, used to produce sugar which is uh, for feeding regions of temperate countries and during napoleonic wars usually the sugar which was transported from the tropical regions was blockaded as a result they had to find an alternative for sugar and that's how beet sugar industry got established and again tropical regions are good for growing sugar canes whereas temperate regions doesn't shoot uh, sh that doesn't suit for the growth of sugar canes this is because of uh, sugar canes which require very hot climate as well as very uh, wet climate though british type of climate is a wet type of climate but still it the temperature is very low and doesn't suit the production of sugar cane so this is all about british type of climate and this is the very important concept under economic geography as well as certain aspects of climatology so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe